Good evening, I'm Ian Garland. You may have thought you heard the last of the illiterati, but in a stunning twist, she has returned. You might wonder why this is a bad thing, because she learned how to read. But the problem is, she can't tell what a credible source of information is. She's so afraid of the scary world outside, she's barricaded herself inside her home and refuses to leave. I had the chance to speak with her earlier via video chat inside her home. Thank you for joining me, illiterati. Hi, thanks for having me. So we're getting reports that you've barricaded yourself inside your house and refused to come out. Can you tell me what you're afraid of? Well, ever since I learned to read, I've been reading nonstop, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And as I've been reading, I've learned so many scary things. Like, did you know that you have a one in 500,000 chance of getting struck by lightning just by walking down the street? or that blue-spotted hippopotamuses are roaming the streets eating people. I know it can all seem really scary, but I don't think that last fact is true. It is. I read it on the internet, so it's, it must be true. Uh, did you read the whole story? Well, no, I, I read the headline and then I got scared, so I posted it online so that my friends and family could hide and take cover like I am. It looks like the illiterati has not been fact-checking or using credible sources for the information she's reading. What's that? I'm getting word that a team from the Forward Public Library has been dispatched to help. Well, that does it for this broadcast. Keep it tuned to FWPL Library News for any breaking developments. Good night. And we're clear. Did you hear what the illiterati said? One of those was a fact, the other one was a rumor. Can you figure out which one was the fact? Let's check out the tape. Did you know that you have a 1 in 500,000 chance of getting struck by lightning just by walking down the street? Or that blue-spotted hippopotamuses are roaming the streets eating people? The fact was you have a 1 in 500,000 chance of being struck by lightning. The rumor was that blue-spotted hippopotamuses roam the streets eating people. A rumor is a piece of information or a story passed from one person to another without any proof that it's true. Sometimes it can be hard to tell what's fact and what might be just a rumor. Many times rumors can start out as fact, but one person tells another and the facts get changed until it's completely different than the original. Have you ever played a game of telephone? One person whispers a sentence to the next person and then that person whispers to the next person and so on and so on. When you get to the end of the line, the sentence has changed completely. And even when you tell someone not to share information, sometimes they do it anyways. That's when rumors can really get out of hand. Always make sure to evaluate your sources. Remember, always treat people the way you want to be treated and don't spread stories about people, especially if you don't know if it's true. Court jesters and fools were hired entertainers known for being able to use humor as a buffer to speak truth to kings and rulers. Fools in several of Shakespeare's plays, as well as jesters in Ivanhoe and a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's court, use comedy to tell rulers what no one else dared to say. For instance, in King Lear, the fool criticizes Lear for splitting up and giving away his kingdom, but hides the criticism in quips and jokes. Dost thou call me fool, boy? All other titles thou hast given away! That thou wast born with! Whether this is based in historical fact or mostly a product of literary artistic license is up for debate, but either way, comedy can be a very effective tool for criticizing decision makers or pointing out news that is biased, sensational, or incorrect. I wonder what's happening in the news. I'll check online. <gasps> Mars attacks Earth! That's sensational! I've got to tell everyone! I'm going to show you some examples on why it's important to read a whole news story and not just stop at the headline. Let's look at this headline, Santa Claus is coming to town. At first glance, you might think it's time to pull out the Christmas lights and ornaments and start rocking around the Christmas tree, but not so fast. This article is really about Santa going to Florida to vacation on the beach. Now let's take a look at this headline. The sky is falling. At first glance, you think it's time to run and hide. 
But calm down, Chicken Little. This story is really about a shooting star. Headlines don't always contain the complete truth, so it's important to read beyond the headline so you can make a good decision on how to respond. So, become your own detective and read the story. Now, once you read the story, use your research skills to learn more about the writer, find other stories like it, and check the date of when the article was actually written. Some news stories may be old, but they're put out again to trick readers into thinking that they're new. If you use apps like Instagram and TikTok, then you know how easy it is to edit and manipulate pictures. Today, many apps can help you become an avatar, an animation, and even William Shakespeare. So not only should you read beyond the headline, but you should also read beyond the picture. Let's check out an example. When you look at this photo, you see a group of girls. They have different expressions on their faces, but the one in the middle looks angry about something. No, she looks mean. By this picture, I can tell that they're all mean girls who wore the same t-shirt in different colors so they can match when they bully other kids. Yeah, that's it. But if I ask questions and investigate a little bit more, I can get more information. Headlines have the power to make you happy, surprised, sad, and even angry. But before you spend all of your time getting wrapped up in those emotions, make sure what you're reading is true and don't judge a story by its headline. Just because something is published doesn't mean you can trust it 100%. Critical reading skills is important when reading information from any source. The term yellow journalism began in the mid-1890s. This term was associated with newspapers that valued gaining money over printing the facts. During this time period, newspapers valued money so much they employed young immigrant children as newsies. In the papers these children sold, you might see exaggerations, scandals, or sensational headlines. Another term is called checkbook journalism. This is where news reporters pay their sources of information without verifying the truth. This often occurs in tabloids and celebrity gossip publications. This cartoon, illustrated by L. M. Glackens, portrays yellow newspapers being printed out of a big yellow printing press. As you can see, the public is so focused on reading the scary headlines, they are not paying attention to the people who are pumping the printing machine with bags of money. Ahem! We would like to interrupt this video to let you know about schnozberries. Did you know schnozberries are great for your schnoz? And they 100% do not cause cancer. Plus, schnozberries taste like schnozberries. How about that? Ah yes, research. Real scientific research takes a lot of time and money. Sometimes, if you trace back the source of the research of health foods and fads, you'll find that they're not really actually properly studied. Sometimes, you might even find out that the funding of that research was paid for by groups that benefit from the sales of this miracle cure. So keep your eyes open and don't always trust the headlines. It is important to question the source of our information because we consume so much information every day. Whether we know it or not, what we consume impacts our decisions and the future of our country. Did you know that a lot of national news and information we read is actually a secondary source of information? That means they pull out information from a primary source, which is often a local newspaper, and simplify it by only sharing parts of the news with partial quotes and bits of information. Oftentimes, local news is more nuanced and complicated with real quotes from local resources. If you want to be more connected to your community, it is good to support your local newspaper. Local news is about your city, your surroundings, and people and institutions who depend on your support. According to the Knight Foundation, Research has shown that the health of local news affects the health of civic life and our democracy. Without local news coverage, fewer people become involved in their communities, fewer people vote, and worst of all, fewer people run for elections. The biggest difference you can make in your world is by being engaged in local communities and local elections. Now that we know all this, what steps can I take to be better in the future? 
I know this is a lot of information. I don't want you to be afraid and hide under your bed with a tinfoil hat. Instead, these are five easy steps that you can take to be a better critical consumer of news and information. Number one, consume a variety of resources, be it newspaper, internet, or community forums. Be sure to check if those sources are trustworthy. Number two, read information thoroughly. Go beyond the headlines and discuss what you read with people around you. Number three, get out of your echo chamber. Make friends with people who have different backgrounds. They might disagree with you, but that's okay. You can learn from them. Number four, check your biases. Are you open-minded enough to change your opinion when you learn about new facts? It's a good thing to be able to learn and adjust when needed. And finally, number five, use your local resources. Your local library, school, or local newspaper is a great way to connect to your community. Just because you're a kid doesn't mean you can't make a difference. Making a difference is a lot easier when you rely on your community and you learn about critical reading skills. It's a great way to get connected and to learn about the difference between fact and opinion. Check out this headline. Mondays must be canceled. Do you think that's a fact or an opinion? And that's a fact. Actually, that's an opinion. When you're reading an article, not only should you read beyond the headline and read the rest of the story, but you should also understand if that new story is based on facts or someone's opinion. An opinion is the way that someone or even a group of people feel about a particular thing. For example, I can say all Americans love to eat pizza, but another person could say, no, all Americans love to eat tacos. Both of these are examples of opinions. A fact is something that is always true and can be proven with research. So an example of this could be that pepperoni pizza is made with pepperoni or tacos were introduced to the US by folks from Mexico. If you're ever reading an article and want to know if a new story is a fact or opinion, Check for opinion words like, I believe, I think, always, better than, and favorite. Hello everyone, hola todos. I have a chisme for you. You know, gossip on the little body. I was told that she sucks on her thumb and still drinks from a bottle. Uh-huh, it's true. Well, maybe not a hundred percent. Hmm, I better investigate or research just to make sure that I can comprove or prove that information. Lucky for me, I get to use the Forward Public Library Bases de Datos. A Base de Datos is a place where you can go and research if things are True, you can prove them or comprobarlo. Hmm, I can't seem to find any information about the chisme I told you about the illiterati. I'm gonna keep searching. What about you? If you were going to investigate in the Forward Public Library's Base de Datos, what would that be? I have two letters here. One is a letter someone wrote to a friend. The other is a letter about that letter. What that means is I have a primary source here and a secondary source here. If you wanted to know what was in the first letter, would it be better to read this letter, the original one, or would it be better to read this letter that's a story about that letter? If you said the first letter, the original, you were right. Primary sources like this one are considered more trustworthy than secondary sources like this one. Thank you, library team. Now I know how to dig deeper into what I read so that I can really understand. I realize now I was getting really worried about stories that weren't even real. I don't think I'll be needing this hat anymore.
If you want to learn more, the library is a great place to start. We specialize in helping people find credible, trustworthy sources. At the library, we have people who work at the information or reference desk. The people who work at this desk are really good at finding sources to help answer your questions. All you need to do is walk up and ask for help. Another place to go is the nonfiction book section. We use numbers to organize the books by topic. If you want to learn about animals, that's in the 500s. If you want to learn about a specific famous person, biographies are in 92 under that person's name. Books about Frida Kahlo would be under 92K for Kahlo. Do you have a research paper to write for school or some homework that's really giving you trouble? We have books and databases to look through to help you find the answers. You don't need to be inside the library to use most of our databases. You can do that from, that, from your house if you log into your library account. Your username is your entire library card number, no spaces, and if you can't remember your password, you can call or come in to the library to get it reset. We have databases available for elementary, middle school, and high school students. Pick the one that suits you best and don't forget to log in. Remember friends, double check facts or stories if you aren't sure that they're true. Thanks for joining us on the Learn Dream Do Show. We'll see you next time. Bye.